robotic explorers from China have established dominance across the lunar landscape. For quite some time now, they've been traversing sections of the moon that remained hidden from human knowledge, uncovering new findings and perhaps most crucially, gathering samples of lunar material to send back to Earth for examination. Within these specimens, the Chinese researchers made a breakthrough, something unprecedented. This discovery promises not merely to reshape our comprehension of the moon, but potentially to alter the trajectory of life on our own world. What makes studying the moon so compelling is this paradox. The deeper our understanding grows, the more enigmatic it becomes. Our planet presents peculiarities that extend beyond its human inhabitants. Earth behaves distinctly from other terrestrial planets within the inner solar system, and our celestial companion bears much of the responsibility for this deviation. Venus stands as the most similar planet to Earth in our solar system. Its dimensions and mass are nearly identical to our own. Yet Venus orbits alone without a moon. Mars, too, shares considerable similarities with Earth. Though diminished in size, roughly half our planet's proportions, Mars does have lunar companions, though they're remarkably small. Few people fully comprehend just how tiny these Martian moons truly are. The larger of Mars's two moons spans merely 22 kilometers across, while the smaller extends just 12 kilometers. Both could comfortably fit within the boundaries of Chicago. When examining the outer gas giants, they possess substantial moons, yet these planets themselves dwarf the Earth by enormous measures. Jupiter surpasses Earth in mass by a factor of 318, and yet its satellite system remains comparable in size to our own. This peculiarity is indeed perplexing, and researchers continue to investigate the mechanisms by which Earth arrived at such an exceptional arrangement. Lunar study provides the key to unraveling this mystery. During the 1960s and 1970s, when NASA sent its astronauts to traverse the lunar terrain, they transported substantial quantities of moon rocks and dust back to our laboratories. Scientists making their initial analyses discovered something startling. The lunar stones exhibited the very same properties as terrestrial rocks. This finding was wholly surprising. Should the two celestial bodies have originated independently, their compositions would necessarily differ. They would resemble two strangers who happened to encounter each other in space and became gravitationally bound. Such a dynamic characterizes most planetary relationships. However, if Earth and the Moon possess such striking similarities, they must have originated simultaneously in the same location. But was such a scenario feasible? Following the Apollo expeditions, researchers developed the prevailing explanation. Earth had experienced a collision with a rogue planet comparable in size to Mars. This catastrophic event would have transpired merely a few hundred million years after the solar system's formation. The precise circumstances of this cosmic impact remained contentious among scientists for decades. However, just a short time ago, this scenario was processed through an advanced supercomputer. The machine executed countless simulations until discovering a result that aligned with every observable detail regarding Earth and our Moon. We refer to this computational finding as the Big Splash. The tremendous energy released during impact transformed both worlds into liquid states, and the collision's force ejected a substantial portion of primordial Earth into the void, whereas the rogue planet's bulk merged with Earth and sank toward its interior. Thus, the Moon functioned essentially as a smaller version of our world that separated and then progressed alongside its parent body, eventually cooling and hardening into the rocky landscapes we observe today. Despite their fundamental similarities, the Moon represents an entirely different world compared to Earth. Everything described represents our best current understanding, though it remains theoretical rather than definitively proven. Nonetheless, this framework illuminates an important principle. As we learn more about the Moon's formation, we simultaneously gain insight into Earth's own genesis. Over the past five years, it has been China's space program that has led the charge in advancing lunar science. They have dedicated enormous resources, time, personnel, and capital, to deploy mechanical explorers to the Moon's surface and pursue answers to these profound questions. Our examination begins at the Moon's far side, a region that has captivated Chinese researchers. They achieved a historic first by reaching this remote area, and they have successfully transported specimens back to laboratories on Earth where they continue to be analyzed. Contrary to what cultural references or popular fiction might suggest, this is not the perpetually dark hemisphere. It receives abundant sunlight, 
The distinction lies in the fact that we never observe it from Earth, as it continuously faces away from us. Theoretically, the two hemispheres should display minimal variation. Reality, however, contradicts this expectation. Curiously, it is we who witness the darker side, for the familiar face we know is defined by vast plains of ancient molten material. Indeed, the moon once possessed volcanic activity. We shall explore this further, but across the far side such dark formations are scarce. Instead, the landscape appears predominantly light gray, marked abundantly by impact scars from countless asteroid collisions. We understand that something fundamental distinguishes the hemisphere oriented toward Earth from the hemisphere facing away. But what accounts for this difference? The Chang'e 4 mission touched down on the far side in January 2019, establishing itself as the first probe from Earth to accomplish this feat and China's second successful lunar landing. Chang'e 4 deployed a rover designated U-22, which began exploring the von Karman crater. The crater extends 180 kilometers across, comparable to Cuba's total length. This particular depression comprises part of the moon's South Pole Aitken Basin, an immense impact structure of nearly the moon's own age. Originating approximately 4 billion years ago and encompassing roughly 2,500 kilometers in diameter, comparable to India's width, Scientists on Earth find this impact zone captivating because the immense asteroid responsible would have penetrated approximately 13 kilometers below the Moon's surface, thereby exposing material drawn from deep within the lunar crust. This subterranean layer harbors the Moon's most intriguing revelations. The material U-22 recovered from this crater's floor is believed to originate from the lunar mantle, the dense layer of semi-solid stone positioned between the external crust and the planetary interior. This represented a watershed moment. Rock from the mantle had never before been discovered on the moon, having never appeared among samples brought back by Apollo astronauts. This discovery sufficiently sparked the imagination of Earth-based scientists and fueled their appetite for additional findings from the far side. Regarding fascination, U-22 documented something decidedly peculiar on the lunar surface in December 2021. Its imaging equipment captured what appeared to be a cuboid object visible in the distance, something distinctly artificial in appearance. Could this represent the monolith predicted by Stanley Kubrick in his film 2001, A Space Odyssey? The answer was no, merely a rock. However, for approximately two weeks, the discovery succeeded in captivating global attention. What observers witnessed was an optical illusion produced by interacting light and shadow, compounded by the reality that electronic imaging relies on square pixels. Consequently, anything displayed at reduced resolution inherently projects geometric characteristics until sufficient proximity allows visualization of its genuine configuration. Regardless, these circumstances led to a return mission to the lunar far side in 2024 via Chang'e 5. The spacecraft established itself at the South Pole Aitken Basin, replicating the previous location with one critical distinction, this time, the Chinese team would gather specimens and transport them to Earth. These samples would constitute the first material from the far side ever placed into human possession. Chinese researchers examining these materials found a composition markedly different from any substance previously gathered on the near side. Apollo astronauts working for NASA had extracted large quantities of lunar rock and soil from numerous landing sites concentrated around the equatorial zone. Consequently, we believed we possessed comprehensive knowledge of the moon's composition. In fact, we had only obtained half of the complete picture. Material sourced from the far side displays a lighter shade than near-side specimens and possesses a substantially different composition. Initial assessments by Chinese researchers revealed that far-side dust and rock appear denser, possess adhesive properties, and demonstrate greater concentrations of aggregated particles relative to prior moon samples. Although volcanic material occurs with diminished frequency on the far side, the lava specimens Chinese scientists obtained, there proved considerably more, contemporary than anticipated. The consensus theory postulated that the far side underwent more rapid cooling than the near-facing hemisphere because Earth itself remained extraordinarily hot and geologically active during those primordial epochs. Consequently, scientists hypothesized that the far side would contain the moon's most ancient volcanic substances. And indeed it does. One lava piece retrieved by Chang'e 5 carries a chronological signature of 4.2 billion years, representing the oldest lunar stone recovered to date.
Simultaneously, researchers uncovered a substantial quantity of comparatively recent volcanic materials on the far side, with a typical age around 2.8 billion years. This chronology substantially predates numerous specimens retrieved by Apollo missions, which typically exceeded 3 billion years in age. We now perceive a lunar portrait quite divergent from prior assumptions, a moon that remained hot and molten for an extended duration relative to previous theories. This actually contradicts numerous predictions derived from the Big Splash hypothesis. Given that Earth and the Moon supposedly formed synchronously, and the Moon is substantially smaller than Earth, it should have solidified and cooled considerably faster, particularly on the far side. The evidence, however, suggests an alternative outcome occurred. This brings us to reconsider the near side. As previously mentioned, our knowledge primarily derives from Apollo missions, though their lunar investigations operated under strict constraints. The astronauts could only land securely on spacious level terrain in the equatorial region, which also happened to be the geologically least remarkable locations. Even with three Apollo teams operating vehicles across the lunar surface, their collective exploration encompassed approximately 25 square kilometers. That represents one-fifth of Disney World's total area. If an extraterrestrial visitor had arrived on Earth, wandered through Magic Kingdom briefly, then claimed complete knowledge of our world, such reasoning would obviously prove absurd. Likewise, this region represents another arena where Chinese endeavors are generating discoveries that fundamentally reshape our comprehension of the lunar body the Chang'e 5 mission represented, the first sample retrieval from the lunar surface since the middle 1970s. Because this was an uncrewed operation, the Chinese possessed the flexibility to target a considerably more geologically significant location, the Remker Dome, a comparatively youthful volcano positioned in the northwestern sector of the near side. Lunar volcanoes function differently from their terrestrial counterparts. They do not erupt violently skyward, constructing towering angular peaks. Rather, a lunar volcano forms over a fissure where subterranean magma seeps gradually outward across extended periods producing this characteristically broad and gently sloping configuration. In the vicinity of Rimker Dome, Chang'e 5 located the most recently formed rock sample ever retrieved to date, approximately 2 billion years, which reinforces scientific understanding that the moon has never been an inert, frozen world for the duration we once presumed. China is simultaneously broadening knowledge about the moon's mineralogical composition. Among the major revelations from the Chang'e 5 collection was a crystalline substance previously unknown to both terrestrial and lunar geology. Researchers designated this discovery Change Site. It does not conform to the typical greystone associated with the lunar environment. Rather, it manifests as a crystal formation, transparent and colorless. Only a single fragment of Change Site has been recovered, measuring less than the thickness of a human hair. Yet this specimen yields profound significance regarding this substance. The mineral contains a scarce isotope designated helium-3. This element carries considerable value because it possesses capacity for producing limitless, emission-free power generation. Helium-3 has historically represented the moon's most promising resource. It travels directly from the sun and accumulates on the lunar surface via solar radiation streams. Earth lacks helium-3 because our atmospheric shield deflects solar radiation, preventing its arrival at our surface, one of nature's most vital protective mechanisms for maintaining life. The challenge with helium-3 concerns accessibility. Realizing its full power potential demands a fusion reactor technology that presently remains non-existent. Once such reactors materialize, this isotope can serve as nuclear fuel generating enormous quantities of power without the hazardous radiation or lasting atomic residue inherent to conventional atomic energy. While significant, this application remains speculative. A development of more immediate consequence emerged from Chang'e 5's discovery of water molecules within lunar regolith. Remarkably, this water was identified not in a shadowed crater as might be expected, but on a volcanic slope. This finding provides compelling evidence that at least modest quantities of water exist throughout the moon's surface. This discovery also marked the first occasion that scientists detected a fully formed water molecule in lunar material. Previously, scientists had identified hydrogen and oxygen in combination, though never specifically as H2O. The water manifested within a novel mineral designated ULM1, classified as a salt-containing water, meaning water molecules maintain chemical bonding with the mineral structure. 
Essentially, it combines the properties of both ice and stone into a singular form. The implication carries substantial weight. If water proves abundant across the moon rather than scarce, human settlements could theoretically establish themselves across virtually any location. We no longer face restriction to those permanently shadowed depressions we once imagined. This discovery interconnects with another principal objective driving China's lunar presence. Comprehending the past certainly fascinates scientists, but designing the future arguably matters even more. The Chinese are constructing the foundational systems for eventual human permanent residence on the lunar landscape. These robotic missions serve precisely this purpose. NASA achieved its historical success by depositing astronauts on the moon with minimal preparation, feasible only because those expeditions lasted mere days. Establishing a permanent lunar settlement demands fundamentally different thinking. One must thoroughly investigate the lunar environment. At present, China leads the international community in this endeavor.